Welcome back to Breakfast at Tracy's. It's the middle of the week. I'm glad you were here. And we've been taking some time to look at grace at a time in our world where we are desperate for God's grace and to be showing God's grace to others. Today's lesson I'm really excited about. It's Grace Flips the Pyramid. You know, in talking about grace, there's a reason it's called amazing. And here's a, a passage from Isaiah that really surprises me and kind of floors me and I hope it does the same for you. It says this, For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. Now, you might not understand how profound that statement is because for human history, anytime people talk about gods, they are there to be served. Human beings, in fact, in Greek mythology, were made to serve the gods. That is why we're here. So here in, in the Bible, we find a very different situation where God actually works for those who wait for him. Wrap your head around that. He works for us. It's, it's this this thing that Jesus demonstrated, a God who serves. You're probably familiar with, you know, the pyramid structure with the boss on top and, you know, and it, and it kind of goes down the, the list of people with uh, less responsibility. But with God, he flips that whole pyramid around and he's there to serve us. Imagine that. It's really hard for me to imagine a God that is that has no selfishness in him. He never asks the question, what's in this for me? Unlike us humans, we're always asking that. But God is always looking out for us to serve us. And this has so much to do with the Trinity because before time began, the Trinity loved to serve each other. As C.S. Lewis described the Trinity as a dance, as a cosmic dance dance. And C.S. Lewis, by the way, uh, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, a great thinker from the 20th century. And he described the Trinity as this dance where one moves and another responds and another moves and another responds. And you look at how the Father and the Son spoke during Jesus' life and how the, the Spirit got involved. And there's this constant serving each other, a constant bringing attention to one another, a constant obedience to one another that you see there. And the great thing is, and get your mind wrapped around this, because of the gospel, God invites us into that dance where he moves and we respond and we pray and he responds. He invites us into this dance, into this relationship. Isn't that beautiful? And here we have a God who doesn't just sit back and wait to be served. He made the first move in this dance and he served us and continues to serve us. Isn't that amazing? That is grace. God didn't have to do that. He just does that. It's part of his character. It's who he is and he continues to serve you. Today, he invites you to be part of that dance. And if you are not part of that dance, turn away from your sin and give your life to Christ and say, I want to be part of the great dance that has been going on since before time began. And God will respond to that move and it will continue on for the rest of your life. It's beautiful. Let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you've invited us into this dance, that you actually work for those who wait for you. It is really hard for us to imagine an all-powerful, all-loving, all-knowing God who would serve us. But that is who you are. It's in your nature. So Lord, help us as your people to respond. When you make a move in this dance, may we be responsive to your lead because we love you because we owe you everything. Thank you, God, for your grace to invite us into this dance and for serving, working for those who wait on you. We praise you, God. We love you. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. God bless you. I pray you have a great day. And remember, 
God is there serving you and inviting you into this dance. Take care.